you know, I left Czechoslovakia in 1968 and I studied in London for one year. Then um, I went to Stuttgart, Germany for seven years. And in 1975, I became with Hans Knill together, uh, artistic co-director of the Netherlands Dance Theater. I'm trying not to be nervous, but I'm very nervous, I can tell you that. Um, then, the moment I arrived in Holland, I was, I was incredibly grateful for all the possibilities and the facilities that uh, Holland gave us, the Netherlands Dance Theater and me, to be able to do uh, what we really wanted to do. But also, I found it very important that one day I will be able to go back to my home country to show what I have done in the meantime. And this is the day when it is all happening. We are on the way to Prague and See that building over there? Yeah. With the green room? That's my school. That's the project. That's the conservatory. Right over with the, with oh, yeah. the, with the flag uh -huh. and with yeah. the sign of the And the statue is on the. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there we used to have classes. You see the cupola, yeah. the, the dome? Yeah. There we used to have classes. Ballet classes. Yeah, yeah. So we uh -huh. couldn't do any diagonal. Yeah. This was the, the classroom where I studied. And this is the bar where I was hanging on all these years, five years. Dobrý večer, přeji všem. Prosím pěkně dovolte, abych dámy a pánové představil uh, choreografa pana Jiřího Kiliána. So listen and enjoy it. Dance like always. <laughs> Yeah, I will. I'm sure I will. Good luck, yeah? I'll be with you.
Well, when the Netherlands Dance Theater was founded 22 years ago, I don't know if anyone would have dreamt that this company one day will dance not only in New York, but in the most holy shrine of theaters in the Metropolitan Opera House. That's where we are now, this week, performing. And um, indeed, it is the most important point in the company's development and in my personal career, of course, as well. It was uh, 1967, actually the time when the whole Prague Spring was being prepared, when Dubček start, started slowly changing the policies and came to power in uh, the spring 1968. It was that time that I was given a scholarship by the British Council to go to the Royal Ballet School for one year to study, to see what, what are the new developments of dance at the time. A fantastic thing that has happened. If you think of the 60s, the, the, the late 60s in London, it was a swinging town, it was the cultural center of Europe, it was the Beatles and the Carnaby Street, and every artist, if it was a musician or a dancer or a painter, he went to London to show what he could do and I went to see everything, and more than everything. It was really the most important uh, time for me until, until then. There, uh, being at the Royal Ballet School, I've seen, the, for the first time, Martha Graham Company. I've seen, of course, the Royal Ballet Company. I've seen the works of Macmillan, of Bejar, of Balanchine, of uh, Robbins, all the, all the important choreographers of the time. <clears throat> and the time was very full indeed, but I wanted to choreograph. So I went to the di directress of the Royal Ballet, Nina de Valo, and asked her, where is the place where you can learn choreography? And she said to me, there is no place to learn choreography, you just watch the old masterpieces. So I watched all the masterpieces, but it was not enough. I wanted to be with a choreographer, with a man who creates the dance of this time. And the coincidence wanted it that once having a makeup class, John Cranko, the director of the Stuttgart Ballet, was in London at that time. And he heard that I was an okay dancer. And uh, he asked me if I could talk to him and, and we sat together for 10 minutes. And without ever seeing me dance, he said to me, why don't you come to Stuttgart? Stuttgart is always sunny. Mm -hmm. So I said, I would love that very much. 
So over the Easter, a couple of days free, I went to Stuttgart to see the company, and it was raining for the whole time. But I felt that this was the place where I, where I wanted to come. And uh, in, after that, I returned back to London, spent the rest of the, uh, of the year in London. And then I went home to Prague, knowing that all the fantastic developments under Dubček have taken place. So I arrived in a totally new situation in Prague, where people in the streets were singing, people were talking to each other, they were not frowning and, and running around like this. The atmosphere has totally changed. And I spent some 14 days in Prague, and the Russians came with the tanks. So the de depression was just as enormous as, as the feeling of freedom before. The clock turned back, they became night, and it was a, it was a horrendous, horrendous experience. So we've protested, we marched, we have, we have screamed, we have uh, carried banners through the streets, we talked and fought with the, with the Russians as well as we could. A week later, I have realized that there was still one train leaving Czechoslovakia to the West Germany, and I wanted to go because I wanted to fulfill the contract that I have signed with Kranko in the Easter time. So I have left and, and the whole family was crying on the train station and it was raining again and, and they all felt that they would never see me again and I was pretty sure I would never come back to Prague again. So I left and I came to Stuttgart to start work in this remarkable, very, very remarkable company. <laughs> Yes, I think I, I fell in love with this uh, dancer, Jerzy Kilian, and uh, then... Do you, do you think so? You're not sure? Yes, I, I think <laughs> I, I remember that, but... Um, because he was a good dancer, or...? I think both. I liked him as a man and as a dancer. And um, then I was joining the company, and I had my first tour with the company to America. And uh, there's a nice story that maybe you should tell uh, about a birthday I had. And uh, I turned 20. And uh, after, it was a coincidence that at that same day, there was a celebration of the company in New York. And uh, it was in a beautiful, uh, Rainbow Room, Rainbow it was room, called, yes, a beautiful uh, building and a huge uh, celebration. And uh, so we danced and we had a fantastic time. And since it was my birthday, I maybe went over the top and uh, stayed very long and danced very crazy. And the next morning, Giri came to me and uh, said, I saw you last night dancing and uh, I feel inspired and I would like to uh, work with you. I would like to uh, choreograph something on you. Mm -hmm. And I think that was for me like that. I mean, Perfect by that questions. time, we hadn't really changed a word or really, I didn't know him really. And then suddenly this uh, came. That was very, very wonderful. And one just You have, a dancer is ambitious in dancing. That's what you want to do. You want to uh, uh, develop as a dancer. You want to find, uh, you become better, you know. It is very, very ambitious, uh, um, uh, how do you say, job. And he was not, I could see as a dancer, he was not, he didn't have that dedication. 
as a dancer. He was, his mind was somewhere else. And uh, that was watching the dance in a different aspect. I could see that, that he was, something else was going on in his mind, away from the own body and the own dancing. You mean I was not concentrated in the rehearsals? I, I am sure you were, but I remember that you stopping class, for instance, uh, earlier than a dancer would do, that wants to, uh, you know, strengthen the body. Now you would rather sit and, and maybe think, work something <coughs> out uh, that uh, was going in a creative way already, I am sure, yeah. It is, being a choreographer is, is being occupied with the creation 24 hours a day. It never leaves. And that's, that's what makes the, the profession very, very demanding, very demanding indeed. And it can have a negative influence on a personal relationship because you're constantly working. There is hardly time of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And that can, on the long run, it can become very difficult. And we have experienced in, in our almost 20 years being together very difficult times because of this very demanding profession. But on the whole, it's still strong enough that we say we want this, this profession is important not only for me, for both of us. And our relationship is equally important to us. So we try to counterbalance things as, as well as possible, but it's often not easy. Ein Krenko-Hit wird aufpoliert. Mozart-Konzert für Flöte und Harfe. Die Choreografie zeigt klar den hohen Standard des Stuttgarter Chor de Ballet. Jirji Kilian aus Prag ist seit drei Jahren Gruppentänzer bei Krenko. Die heutige Ballettpremiere wird für den 23-Jährigen entscheidend sein, nicht für den Tänzer. Zum ersten Mal choreografiert Kilian ein großes Ballett. Ich, ich mache, was ich fühle und ob es, ob es äh, kranko still ist oder mein Stil. Also ich, über Still kann ich, kann ich überhaupt nicht reden, weil ich glaube, es soll man über, immer für jedes einzelne Ballett, für jedes neue Ballett ein neues Stil entwickeln oder entdecken. Marcia Haidé und Richard Cragen meistern Kilians choreografische Kaprisen. Ihr Pas de Deux ist Höhepunkt von Kommen und Gehen. Jirji Kilian hofft, mit seinen choreografischen Erfindungen neben John Cranko bestehen zu können. Der Uraufführung jedenfalls sieht er gelassen entgegen. Man, man hat das Beste getan, was man will. Das, die Arbeit ist einmal vollendet. Es kann man nichts, nichts mehr ändern. Das, und dann, dann sich zittern. Die Engländer sagen, don't cry over the spilled milk. Not only he was a very, very good dancer, but he was very, very special. He was, one can say, a Cranko special. 
the Krenko specials that I mean are all the dances that immediately could work with a choreographer, that have the mentality or the uh, approach to work that excites a choreographer. And Yiri was like that. That's why I can, uh, I can see how Yiri became one of the great choreographers that he is today. Because already as a dancer, he was very much like that. Whilst you're talking about dancing, if, if somebody like me would come to my company to audition, I would never take him. Really? Never. Why? Why are you saying that? Much too, not enough technique, much too stubborn, always had his own head, his own way. Oh. But that's why you write for this company. This company, <laughs> at that time, I don't say that now, maybe still the same, because I think technique is something that has evolved. I mean, I see what the, in the corps de ballet, the technique that they have today, we principals at that time didn't have that kind of technique. To be a principal today, it's, it's a nightmare because you, you have to have a completely different way of dancing that we had at that time. But at that time, none of us really had that much technique. We were all personality and we all, uh, well, that's why you suited us. <laughs> and about his first choreographies? Well, already the first thing that uh, Yiri ever did, you could see that that was a choreographer, already from beginning. I think his first pas de deux was an uh, equal masterpiece to everything that he does today. There was already, he wasn't a young, he was never a young choreographer, Yiri, never. He was a choreographer, never. Because there are choreographers that start in the first work and the second work, you sort of, but we did it never. He was already from the beginning. The first thing he did was already top class. And you danced in one of his first. Yes, I did one of his, one of his first things, and you tell about it. I just remember that I was so, I, I I got so tired. I don't think I ever got so tired in my life. Already, even before the party day started, I was tired because I was running around. He made me run up and down and around and run again and run here. And now we started party day. I was already dead. And then in the middle of the party day, there was this crazy step in which I had to turn on Ricky's back. I was lying on my stomach on Ricky's back and just kept going around. And uh, somehow wouldn't quite work. And he says, you need more force. You really have to go into it. And we did. And Ricky really threw me and I spin and I landed under the piano. Landed, head, body, everything <laughs> under the piano. So that's what I remember from working with you. That was oh, good, he yes, loved. that was he wonderful. Loved. He says, yeah. oh, we made it. And since then it was called the Volksfest. The Volksfest, yes. Yeah, the Volksfest uh, lift. I think dancers in this generation are very lucky to have choreographers like, uh, like Yerzy.
there is nothing really like a Kilian dancer. But it is always very interesting to work with other people who have to do the same roles because you have to find the specific things that are in the dancers.